My impression of Lamom's race car should never be clean and pristine. The finished model is all covered in brake dust, dead bugs and mud. This video will showcase the complete build process with the Unseen Part 3 making footages. The unwanted chrome finish was removed by dipping into a tray of bleach. The engine block was first painted with Alclad Gloss Black Base before applying other metallic colors. The manifold exhaust pipes were first painted with the same black base before applying Alclad Chrome. The block was then applied with titanium gold color. The chrome color on the exhaust manifold serves as a base. I then applied the Alclad hot metal sepia and exhaust manifold as burnt oxidized effect. The block was shaded with Tamiya panel liner solution and flat black. I added the scratch built distributor with spark plug lines that was missing on the engine. and alclad paint on the exhaust was quite fragile so need to be very careful when handling. The kit comes with the tiny spring mountings for the exhaust pipes. To further enhance the engine, I added the PE clamps by Top Studio to the joint areas of the exhausts, After putty filled all the holes and primed, the chassis was painted with Tamiya Royal Blue and varnished with semi-gloss clear. To start painting the body, I mixed enough paint to be used for the whole car. The Acadian Blue as used at the time by the Mustang was mixed with Mr. Hobby color 1 and 323, in 95 to 5 ratio. Before applying the decals, I had to make sure the surface is to be nice and smooth for clear gloss later, I used 2000 to 3000 grit to sand down any impurities. The decals of Trumpeter had a few issues, they are thick but brittle, and did not stick too well to the surface. After 48 hours of drying, I varnished it with Zero Pen 2 pack clear coat. After waited for 3 days, I started to wet sand the surface with sandpaper from 2000 to 10,000 grit. I used Scratch X 2.0 polish compound to polish the clear coated areas. I used MIGS oil brusher to add on the dirt and grease accumulation on the bottom of the vehicle.
the oil paint could be further thinned out to provide the streaking effect with mineral spirit. The scratches were added with aluminum paint. After the parts were painted, they could be installed onto the chassis. The holes on the cabin parts were putty filled and primed with surfacer before painted with royal blue. The seat cushion rivets extend too far to the top and bottom ends which need to be removed. The seat cushion also looks too plain which lacks soft touch details. I use knife to scratch out some wrinkles and uneven shapes. After painted the seat semi gloss black, I use the chrome marker to paint all the rivets. The kit supplied with seat belts made with fabric and PE parts which were easy to use. The drive shaft console I saw from a real GT40 has a heat shield covering, I use the textured aluminum foil taken from the margarine packing to assimilate it. The real car should have a fire extinguisher and not a battery, but I just leave it as it is. I replaced the thick and wobbling original rear view mirror piece with a thin piece of mirror decal. I used to me a craft bond for all the clear parts to avoid fogging. The dash surrounds were highlighted with chrome marker. The kit right door has an headroom extension which was not found on the actual 66 La Moms version. The depression was filled with plastic sheet and putty. The door's roof were missing the supporting frame and I had to fabricate it using wire and epoxy putty. The door parts were painted with white primer before applying the Ford Acadian blue. The painted surfaces were sanded with 2000 and 3000 grits to achieve smoothness before applying decals. The trumpeter decal is not flexible enough to fit to the louver profile, so I had to cut the decal out and painted the areas separately. I applied zero paints clear coat in three to four layers. I left the clear coat dried for three days before sanding it smooth, starting from 1500 to 10,000 grits.
I use the Scratch X 2.0 polishing compound for cars to polish the surface. Need to be careful with the edges and protruded parts or it may grind down to the paint. The original door handle of the kit was replaced with scratch-built handles made with brass strips and pinned to assimilate the thin leather look. The windshield frame was painted semi-gloss black. I left the deflector in the fuel tank as chrome plated, I applied semi-gloss clear to cut the shine for more realistic metallic look. Putting all the painted and PE parts together. Applying the semi-gloss clear on the chrome plated parts. Attaching the cabin structure on the base. I thought it might be interesting to add a door swing restraint on both doors, I fabricated it with brass plates and woven string. The other end of the string to be attached to the door. The trumpeter kit did not include the side mirrors mounted behind the glass window, so I made one with molding the 112th F1M23 side mirror part. I used craft bond to attach the glass window. I left the original gold color on the front wheels. The rear wheels were painted with Mr. Metallic iron color. The advantage of using Mr. Metallic Iron was that you could bring to any sheen you want with the buffing. The front wheels were sprayed painted with a bit of aluminum and Mr. Metallic Iron paints, but making sure the gold color still be visible. At the end I sprayed some darker brown plus rubber black to resemble the dust cover. The rest of the parts in the engine bay were assembled. I highlighted the molded seams on the plastic to be sanded down. The inside of the cowls were first painted with semi-gloss black. Again I spray the cowls with surfacer before applying the Arcadian blue. The red droplet shaped paint scheme was prepared by using the Tamiya flexible tape. I sprayed with mixed color Mr. Color 158 Super Italian Red plus 173 Fluorescent Orange in 4 to 1 ratio. After sanded the painted surfaces, the decals were applied.
the kit did not include the white stripe decals for the rear spoiler, I had to paint them myself. Again I used zero paint clear coat for the cowls. Again using the same polish compound for the body polishing. The PE grills were attached with CA glue and covered with a chrome frame. The rear lights were also attached with CA glue. The rear cowl had two wire restraints when at open position. I replaced the kit's wire with some bendable ones. The two restraints came with hooks that could be attached freely to the engine bay to keep the rear cowl opened. Attaching the glass and other parts. The inside housing of the lights were painted with Vallejo acrylic black and later varnished with semi-gloss clear. The panel lines were darkened with Tamiya panel liner solution. I kept the original chrome on the lights and touched up the cut areas with chrome marker. Again I used to me a craft bond for attaching the clear plastic lens to the lights. The black surrounds of the light cover were painted on the inside of the cover. The uneven bleeded edges could be easily fixed with a toothpick. From the real GT40 colored photos, the wiper was actually same as the body color. Before applying the extensive grime and dirt, I wanted to add all the dirt onto the exterior recessed areas. 
I use the Tomia Black Panel Liner solution to achieve. I used a cotton swab soaked with enamel thinner to adjust the dirt accumulation. Some streaking effect due to wine draft could also be done at the same time. The door of the GT40 was famous for not closing properly and thus creating some nicks and dents on the edges. Based on some real photos I added a bit of those damages with aluminum paint. And now the most anticipated stage of applying the grime and dirt over the body, I used 4 part black to 1 part red brown enamel mix for spraying. The La Mom's dirt should compose of both misty and spattering grimes, I used the smallest spray gun that could adjust the output pressure and tested it on a shiny plastic surface. According to testing, High pressure creates misty effect and less pressure creates spattering effect. Based on a real photo, I tried to replicate the dirt pattern as in the real car, the rest might have to imagine. The dirt on the windshield needed to be applied with the wiper area screened out. I marked the extent of the wiper swiping pattern with tapes.
Then I could start spraying the dirt paint lightly. The wiper could now be installed, it fitted quite well with the pattern. As the body of the car was constantly serviced in the pit, the pit crews would have white marks shown on the dirt. This could be easily created with cotton swab soaked with a bit of enamel thinner, since the lacquer base paint and clear coat would be safe. Again I referred to the real photo and imagined the rest.
Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe to my channel for more upcoming videos.